records show that we placed you and your brother in a foster home when you were 10 and he was 13. I see that you both ran away from there when you were 14. The next four years, I have nothing on you until you were 18 and you went in the Army. Nothing at all on Jason? No, nothing. Sometimes uh, we get an inquiry from a prospective employer or colleges. Uh, in your case, uh, we got one from Braddock Industries when you went to work for them. Well, that's all right. I have, I'm in a hurry. Thanks for everything. When you and your brother ran away, where did you go? Well, we found another home. Have you checked with them? Not yet. Well, if you have the address, I'll put it in the file. No, that's all right. Thanks for everything. <laughs> Program this right away. I'll be in Forbes's office. That has no value. How about this? Excuse me. Data processing. Forbes. Yes. Mr. Fletcher? It's not as simple as we thought it would be. Information is still coming in from our field operators, and it takes time to correlate it. Mr. Maitland is getting impatient. This looks interesting. I just got a new readout. You have no right to do this. Is that a fact? Yes, it is. Are you almost done? Just about. About 15 minutes. George, I uh, asked you to call me back here so we can have a talk. Listen, George, I'm having a little trouble with the financing. Yeah, money's kind of tight right now, and you know how it is, and uh, I wondered if your bank... Jason Richards, right? Uh, excuse me, George. Yeah, who are you? Well, I may be your brother. Uh, George, could uh, I call you back in a few minutes? Thanks. What are you talking about? I'm Ben Richards. I don't have a brother. You can't be sure about that. Now, look, how do you know that much about me? Hello? What, what's this all about? Look, I'll explain. Uh, can we go in the house? No, you can't. Not unless you got a good reason. Well, those men out there, that's good enough reason. They're waiting. And when the man they're waiting for gets here, that's when the trouble starts. Now, look, I don't know if this is a joke, but I don't like it. They're after me, and now they're after you. 
Your name is Jason Richards. You sell construction machinery. You're married to a woman named Allison. You've been married seven years, no children yet. And believe me, you're in trouble. Now look, I don't know what you want here, but if you don't get out of here, I'm gonna call the police. <laughs> Listen to me. There's a man named Fletcher. He's after your husband and he's after me. Why? He wants something we both have. What? Now, that's probably Fletcher. Will you accept one thing? I could be your brother. Well, trust me. Look, stall him. Tell him to come back a little later. Just give me a chance to explain. Please. OK. Jason, I don't like this. Let me handle it. Mr. Richards. Yes? My name is Fletcher. I'm with the National Research Institute. I guess so. This is my wife. Oh, Mrs. Richards, my pleasure. Hello. Will you sit down? Yes, thank you. Now, what can I do for you and the uh, National Research Institute? You can accept a great deal of money. We have researched you, Mr. Richards, in great depth, including your present financial difficulties. You have an opportunity to purchase the machinery dealership where you're currently employed. You need approximately $12,000. Now, what is this? This is a check for $12,000. And an additional eight. For what? For signing this contract. I will require both signatures. The Institute is doing research into genetic patterns, and we will require six months of your time. Six months? Oh, all expenses will be paid, of course, plus the $20,000 free and clear. What kind of research? Resistance to illness, fatigue level. You will also be required to stay at the Institute, undergo certain tests, and give blood samples, and that's all. Why don't you have your attorney look at the contract, Mr. Richards? But do it as soon as possible. Uh, Mr. Fletcher, do you know a man named Ben Richards? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, has he been here? Should we be quiet? Look, this man forced his way into our house, threatened us, and he's in our kitchen right now.
Richards was in the house. Cover the rear. Keep an eye on the alley in the houses nearby. Move. Mr. Richards. He used to work for the Institute, stole some money and conceived a grudge. But don't let that concern you. We can handle him. Excuse me. Very disturbed man. I really am dreadfully sorry, Mrs. Richards. You know, this whole thing is terrifying. I must apologize for having upset the household. But if you are ready to sign the contract, we can see that Ben Richards won't threaten you any longer. Talk it over. But I must have a decision very quickly. Jason, I don't know how we can just pick up and take off in 10 minutes' notice. $20,000. would solve just about everything. Besides the National Research Institute, well, you can't get much more respectable. I suppose so. Uh, Mr. Fletcher? Yes? We'll be happy to sign your deal. That's wonderful. Don't worry about Ben Richards. I can guarantee we'll have you both safely away from him very quickly. Are the quarters for Mr. and Mrs. Richards ready yet? Yes. Mr. Maitland would like to see you. Tell him I'll be right up. Please, uh, make yourselves comfortable. I'll be back shortly. Excuse me. Well. It's all very real. Twenty grand. Yes, but I'm still not quite sure exactly what for. Cooperating, the man said. The contract said we provide six months, and they pay. Simple. I know, but closing the house and notifying everyone in town and leaving on just a few hours' notice, it's all very simple, but I'm exhausted. Oh, honey. Notify. I forgot to call George back. Who? George Presby at the bank. When that nut busted in, I was talking to George. Uh, hello? Yes? I'd like to place a call. I'm very sorry. Mr. Fletcher must okay all outgoing calls. Well, I'll pay for it. I'm very sorry. Dumb rules. Jason, what is it? Yes, Mr. Richards? You always keep this door locked? Yes, I have my instructions. I'm very sorry. Now, look. Jason! Please. Mr. Richards, control yourself. Oh, we're leaving. Right now. No, Mr. Richards. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, please wait until Mr. Fletcher returns. Fletcher said you were a maniac. Look, who is Fletcher? I mean, what is this place? And who are you? I'll explain, but not here. We're going home. Fletcher will be after you. I said we're going home. All right. First thing, I'm calling the police. Don't. What are you going to tell them? You're being held prisoner? Yes, that's what happened. And who's going to believe you against the word of all those nice people at the National Research Institute? I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Fletcher doesn't sue you for breach of contract. Look, Mr. Richards, that sounds so funny. Try Ben. All right, Ben. Would you just please explain? The man Fletcher works for is named Maitland. The Maitland? Arthur Maitland? Maitland Industries, Maitland Mining, insurance companies, hospitals, on and on and on. Fine, but what does he want with us? Maitland's been after me for a long time. Now he wants Jason for the same reason. The blood we share. I want to know how they got out. All the freight entrances are still open, Mr. Fletcher. I know that, Dalby. Ben Richards apparently got in posing as a visiting doctor. He's got nerve and brains. You lack both. All right, three of them shouldn't be hard to locate. Let's move. Not you. I'm okay. I'm sorry they got away. You're allowed one mistake. You've made it. You're through. Immortality? I don't know. Maybe. Your blood regenerates. That's nonsense. Then why is Fletcher willing to spend $20,000 and a lot of hard work for him? But Ben, this is crazy. I'm a guy who sells construction machinery. I've got a, a wife, an oversized mortgage. I live a normal life. And if you were my brother, you just traded in your normal life for... Well, you define it. Define it? I can't even understand it. Immortality. Jason, do you realize if, it, if it's true, it means that I'll just keep getting older while you stay young? Oh, honey, it's all talk. Allison, the effect's transferable. If Jason does have the blood, he can give you a transfusion. One lasts for a few months. That's why Maitland wants me at any cost, and that's why he wants you. Ben, are you sure? No, I'm not sure. I haven't seen my brother since we were kids. In the orphanage. What were your parents' names? I don't know. Uh, ben, he doesn't know. He was wounded very badly, and he, and he lost his memory. All right, you want to know the truth? I came to in the hospital. It was as if I was born that day. I was 20-some years old, with a cracked skull and no memories. They told me who I was. I went back over it. I visited the orphanage. They didn't recognize me. I was just another name on a, on a record folder. That's all I know. That's all I remember. Nothing. When you were in the hospital, wounded, did you heal fast? Normally. getting lighter outside. It's daylight. Time to wake up and stop dreaming. Well, Fletcher's no dream, and he's gonna be here soon. Well, this is my house and my town, and if I pick up that phone, I'm a respectable taxpayer calling the police for protection. Against a man with a signed contract? Jason, will you listen to me? Now, Fletcher's gonna wait, and he's gonna watch. Now, he's gonna wait for one of you to be alone. And then? I don't know, darling. I don't know anything anymore. Allison, do you have someplace you can go? I have a sister in Sacramento. 
Now, I'll let you know about that. Uh, a friend of mine called. I haven't seen in years. She's just moved nearby here. I guess no one would know about her. Fine, you go there, then. I'm not going to leave Jason. Allison, you have to. Now, Jason and I have to hide out just long enough to find out if he does have the blood. A fishing camp. A friend of mine has an old trailer up in the mountains near Hidden Lake. It's about 40 miles from nowhere. Yeah, that'll be perfect. All right? I'll get changed. Come with me. I'll get you a warm jacket. Okay. Hello, this is Mrs. Richards. I'd like a, a cab right away, please, at 12921 Maple Drive. Please. Cab's on its way. You have a map of the area? Yes, but this place isn't on any map. That's all right. I want to leave a message for Fletcher, pointing to San Francisco. You go about this almost professionally, then. Yeah, I've been running a long time, and sometimes you learn something while you're on the run. I'll be fine. Maybe I should pack. It's your cab. One minute, I've got to make a phone call. Susan? Hi. I'm sorry it's so early in the morning, but... I wonder if you can stand a house guest for a few days. I just want to get away. Great. I'll see you in a little while. Bye. I paid off the taxi cab. You shan't be needing it. Where are they, Mrs. Richards? San Francisco. I don't believe that. They would have taken you with them. But you're going to tell me where they went, aren't you? I'm not going to tell you anything. Oh, but you are. I'm going to leave it open in case we have to leave in a rush. Pure dirt trail from here. Nobody's ever going to find it. I'm a nervous type. you do know? Look, there's... Somebody's coming by to pick me up. Any minute now, you're going to have to let me go. I wouldn't dream of it. I think no. you're tired enough now. What is that? It's a new tranquilizer. It's not on the market yet. It has some interesting side effects. Oh. It makes you relaxed, completely cooperative, and eager to answer any questions truthfully. <laughs> Now, 
Where are they? Where's Ben? Where's your husband, Alison? Where are they, Alison? Where's Ben? It's beautiful. And peaceful. And I just realized, I mean, if you're right, if I'm your brother, I have time. And do you remember anything about me? Anything at all? Well, some things. But, uh, well, they separated us, you know, put us in uh, different age groups. And my folks, all the ones that adopted me, they told me I had a brother named Jason. And he was adopted by another family, and that's all they know. And I got out of the hospital. I started searching for my own history. A blank. 20 years long. That's all. Well, there's two of us now. Well, we, uh, we should be safe here for at least uh, a day or two. I'm looking all over for him, and there's nothing in sight. Then extend the search area. I want aerial photographs of everything within a 20-mile radius until you find them. Out. Ben, what do you think caused it? The blood, I mean. Well, the doctor who discovered it said it was a genetic accident. You see, most people have immunities in their blood, some more than others. But we have all the immunities. We? Do I? Well, we'll find out. That's why we have to find a doctor we can trust. Somewhere that Fletcher doesn't suspect. You know, Maitland's worth billions, and he'll spend every penny of it to get his hands in the blood. You know, it's, it's a defense against disease, against infection. Against dying? What does that make us? Responsible. I've thought about it. We have to keep learning, stay free, till we figure out how to turn this genetic accident into something good for everyone. Instead of a private dose of immortality for that pirate Maitland. <laughs> Woman couldn't pinpoint the location precisely, but they are within a 10-mile radius. So we'll go farther up the road and cut in from the west, and you go down the dirt road here and start from there. Do you understand? Yes, sir. service. Yeah, and it might be Fletcher. Well, it's gone. Well, we better get out of here. Because it might have been from Fletcher. Listen, Fletcher's a hunter. He's a pro. Now, we've got to stay ahead. Is there a chance of getting over this ridge? It's just a dirt track. I don't know if we can get through it without a four-wheel drive. Well, we'll try. some stuff in the car.
stay put. Why don't we take a car? Because Fletcher have the roads covered. I'm gonna do it the hard way. Fletcher. Coming up in the hills. Listen, can we stay undercover? And stay ahead of them? Well, the odds are 50-50. Not bad. Ben! Jason! You can stop running now. I have a leash on you. Join us, gentlemen. The lady is getting lonely. Jason, I'll make it simple for you. I want one of you. Flip a coin. Me? No, no, no. But you want that either. One of us go free. Maybe leads a lot of animals for his experiments. And he's got my wife. Jason, he won't hold her. He can't risk it. He's got to have all three of us so one of us won't blow the whistle on him. You're very logical, brother. But it's not going to work. Jason, will you listen to me? I know Fletcher, he won't hurt Allison. Now, let's just take some time and, and talk this over. Maybe we can get her out of there. Maybe we can get her killed. No. Will you trust me, Jason? Start walking, brother. You'll get a head start anyway. Oh. The first rule of tactical warfare, divide and conquer. You can stop me, Ben. But you'll have to keep stopping me. That'll give him time. I'm sorry, Jason. The trail runs due east. It's about two miles that way. The nearest town on the other side is Puma Valley. Okay. Pleased to have met you, brother. We'll see each other again. That's right, I forgot. We've got all the time in the world. Jason! Oh, Jason. Touching. Where's Ben? He's gone. Over the hills and far away. Get after him. You. Take a car and cover the western side of the range. And on your way, call out the chopper. I want to fix on it. And see that every road out of the mountains is covered. Move. You see, if he goes down the far side of the mountains, there's only one town he can aim for. I believe it's called Puma Valley. I waited a long time for Ben Richards. The next few hours are going to be a distinct pleasure. It's got dirt in it. There's a first aid kit in the trailer. Can I go get it? I'll survive. We'll get it for you. That's one thing neither of you will ever have to worry about again. You'll have the finest medical treatment that money can buy. I hope Ben gets away. He won't, Alison. Hold it.
can't get away, Ben. Every road's covered. There uh, are a dozen men in the area. That's right. And they're all going to salute us when we, when we drive out in your car. Oh, Jason. Well, it worked. He sent his army out chasing after me. Is there any rope in that trailer? I'll see. Give one of those to Jason. Jason, tie that other guy up. And Allison, start Fletcher's car. and you're bleeding again. What is it? Well, it'll heal. Jason, when I cut myself or bruise myself, I heal fast in a matter of minutes. You're still bleeding. I'm not your brother. Well, we can't be sure. But you don't have the immunities in your blood. Well, at least Fletcher won't be after you two now. Well, I'm glad. I don't care about living five lifetimes anyway. I love you, Jason, and I just want a nice, happy, normal life. I want to grow old and have children, and I'll settle for that. I don't blame you. I'm sorry, Ben. Yeah, I'm sorry, too, but... Uh... At least Fletcher is going to be sorrier. <laughs> Look, Ben, leave us here. You take off. Let Fletcher test me. It'll buy you time. Do it. Could be rough. He's only after one thing. If he knows I haven't got it, he's got to go after you. We'll be fine, Ben. Just go. OK. And thanks. Take care of yourself, Ben. I'll try. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ben. We had to leave. And you stayed behind? That's right. We don't want any more trouble. That's a very wise decision. Yes, we thought so, too. Oh, uh, by the way, 
that medical help you mentioned, I can use it. See this, uh, this cut doesn't seem to be healing. Are you sorry about it, Jason? Not having all those miracles in your blood? Maybe. So. But I guess I'm sorrier that I had a brother. And lost him. I don't think you lost him. Ben knows how we feel about him. Otherwise, why would he have gone to all that trouble getting your pictures and sending them to the man who adopted him, making certain that you weren't his brother? I guess so. Maybe that's why I keep on worrying about Ben. He'll be coming back. Someday. I hope so. I know so.